and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. As you can see by the vastly different title screen, I am no longer using the free demo version of Kerbal Space Program. I now have the regular release version, version 0.16. And for this, I have to thank two people, Azariah Z and Max 73 I very much appreciate the donations. It has gone to good use. And now, let's go ahead and get into this thing. And uh, I see that the Kerbal Space Center has advanced considerably. There is a tracking station, the vehicle assembly building, the launch pad, and a space plane hangar. And I'm going to be interested in getting into that at some point, but not right away, I think. I'm going to head on over here to the Vehicle Assembly Building, and we'll get started. We have more command modules to choose from. The original one doesn't seem to be there anymore. The one that was uh, basically this size and uh, could house three. This is uh, a single man, a single Kerbal capsule. Single Kerbal capsule. Say that three times fast. I dare you. Uh, as for loading spacecraft, you will note that I have no ships to load. I did try to import the craft files from 0.13 to this. However, the format has changed since then, and I'm unable to import those files. But that's all right, because as the tracking station indicates, this version has something that one didn't, persistence, which means there can be multiple flights in progress at a time, and I intend to take advantage of that. However, first off, let's begin building something with this version. I'm going to start with this Mark I command pod, and just go with that. Let's see, we have a whole lot of new parts here and uh, so on. So I'm going to go ahead and... I don't know, this parachute looks bigger, so I'm going to put that one on here. Oh, good night it is. I don't know. You think that's overkill? So do I. I think I'll leave it there. Okay, next up... Your basic stack decoupler. And since, obviously, since because of the, uh, the loss of my old craft files, the crap series is ended. And now we will be building something different. This time, because we have so many more new parts, we have much larger engines and fuel tanks available many more things to do, much larger solid boosters. Well, you know, uh, Kerbals believe in the Tim Taylor philosophy. More power. More power is always better. So, we're going to go with that. Let's see. First, let's stick on an advanced SAS, just for grins. And while we're at it, let's throw in some RCS fuel. Uh, I, I'm thinking let's just be really ridiculous and put four of them on there. And while we're at it, some RCS thrusters. And for this upper stage here, say two of the old familiar liquid fuel tanks. Oh, hell, let's make it three. And liquid fuel engine with thrust vectoring. All right, that's cool. And another decoupler. Now, here's where we start to get big time. We'll go for this huge tank of fuel. It looks like a 55-gallon drum. It really does, and as a matter of fact, 
I want three of them. And I've looked around at these parts. I'm going to use this big honking 1200 thrust engine. Look at the size of that thing. It's got to be good. It's huge. <laughs> you know how that goes. All right. And, uh, all right. We know from previous experience that this thing is not going to be very stable without some kind of fins on it, winglets. So, let's go with winglets. And we'll use eight-way symmetry just to improve the chances that there'll be enough to control the thing. And I see something here. Canard. Which is basically uh, like the winglets, only they go in the forward end of the vehicle. Let's go ahead and put this on here. And for that matter, we'll put some more up here. You know something? That looks like a digging tool, almost a cutting tool. All right, now, also referring to previous experience, Let's uh, go ahead and strut this sucker down. Give it a little bit of physical stability. All right. And uh, just because I want to be completely outrageous, let's strap on these great big honking solid boosters. Oh, wait a minute. That's right. We need these first. Okay. Now, let's get these big honking solid boosters on here. Okay. That looks good. They're not clipping anything. They're not clipping the winglets. Speaking of winglets, let's go ahead and put one on each booster. Oh, heck, let's just... More is always better, right? More power, more winglets, more thrust, more rocket engines. More things to make noise and go boom. Okay. And I remember other things about stability, so let's put an SAS module on top of each booster just to help stability during launch. That way we don't have to use the RS RCS fuel right away. Okay, now we have this great big ship that looks like it's supposed to uh, spin and cut, dig, or something like that. Or uh, maybe it's some kind of an alien surgical probe or something. It's what it looks like. Sort of, kind of. We need a name for this thing. Now, the crap series is obviously done with. So, we have much larger, more powerful parts to work with. So let's just go ahead and call this the heavy crap. Because it's crap and it's heavy. All right, let me check the staging here real quick. Okay. Yeah, we want this engine to fire up when the solid boosters separate. And then when that stage separates, we want this other one to fire up. Okay. 
Looking good. Looking good. Save it. Let's head out to the launch pad and see how much destruction we can cause. Okay, now one thing I've noticed with this sucker is that when you go to the launch pad or the runway, either way, it takes a while, a few minutes, uh, seconds or whatever, for the uh, program to stabilize. All right, we've got our SAS on, we've got our fine control, or precision controls on. Throttle up and launch before this thing falls over. Back off the magnification to get the whole thing in the picture. That's cool. Okay, it's wobbly as all get out. It's jittering like crazy, but it's flying and climbing like an SOB. Booster set. Something exploded on separation. I have to make sure to look at the mission report. Let's give the ship a once over. Nothing appears to be missing. All right. Have a quick look at our orbital profile here. Okay. big honking engine is really doing a pretty good job as it's drinking fuel like it's going out of style. Let's start our turn. Oh, God. No, don't thrust downward, you idiot. Jebediah, you're crazy. Point that thing at the sky like it's supposed to be. Oh, for crying out loud. Finally. Okay. We're about done with that stage. Well, one more tank of fuel, but it's going fast. How's our orbit shaping up? 15 kilometers, apoapsis. No, not really equatorial, so we're not worried about that, I guess. For this flight, we just want to see if we can get this big honking turd into orbit. Turd with razors on it. <laughs> oh, there's a metal picture for you. Big honking turd with claws. Okay. Staging is cool. Apoapsis is 32,000 and rising. Okay. This one's not eating the fuel quite so fast, but it's almost through the first of three tanks. Alright. So far it's looking good after a really shaky launch. 59, 60. Alright, getting ready to cut the engine. Get it up to about 80. Good, right there. All right. Jebediah, you are real lucky I don't make you go EVA and let go. And apparently there are a lot more Kerbals to fly missions, which of course makes sense since you can have multiple missions in progress at one time. All right, two minutes to apoapsis. Let's go ahead and time compress some of that. Oh, 
we're still in the atmosphere. And by the time we're out of the atmosphere, we'll be too close for time compression to be useful. Okay. Not a problem. Yeah, we're getting real close. So let's go ahead and make our prograde turn. Get pitched over prograde. This beast will turn. Getting there. Okay, right there. Lock it down. All right, Jebediah, you crazy SOBU. See if we can get your funky butt into orbit. One minute to apoapsis. Bring up my nav ball here so I can watch the orbit. Okay. That's close enough. Let's go ahead and burn this sucker. Pull that orbit out of the ground. So far, so good. Here comes a periapsis. Bring the periapsis around to where we are and cut the engine. Hell, cut it now. No, burn some more. 59 isn't high enough. Cut it. We have a 692 kilometer apoapsis. Okay. Okay, Jebediah. You're in orbit. And you're loving it too, aren't you? Okay, another thing also is in this version, of course, not only is there the moon, but there is also another moon, smaller one, Minmus, 46 million meters out, or 46,000 kilometers. And I understand in 0.17, which is apparently coming up relatively soon, I don't know a date or anything like that, but from what I've seen on the forums, it's going to be coming out soon. And uh, when that comes out, there will be several more planets and moons added. That's going to be interesting. We will get to have interplanetary flight. Okay, now let's warp this time ahead. Get up here. And then have a look at our orbit status. All right. Okay, we have about a half of one tank of fuel. And by the way, if you keep noticing uh, the sound cutting out, uh, the reason for that is that I seem to have picked up a little bit of a cough, and instead of coughing in your ears, I'm just nuking the sound any time I happen to do it, so you'll hear the sound drop out occasionally. All right. Let's get rotated around prograde so that we can do a little something about circularizing this orbit, or at least bring the uh, low point up enough to make it a survivable orbit that will actually last a few orbits. go right on the line all 
All right. Okay, we'll just pass apoapsis. So let's bring this up. Thrusting gently. That's good. We can worry about the niceties of circular orbits another time. All right. So, heavy crap has achieved orbit on its first flight. I'll say this for it, it's a lot more successful than uh, crap one was. Okay, actually this would be the heavy crap mark two. I need to remember to rename this. All right, so what I propose to do is to head back to the Space Center, leave Jebediah up here. <laughs> 